Life Christian Television presents a special presentation on mental health through a biblical view, Pathway to Healing and Wholeness with your host, Lisa Eddy. Hello and welcome to Pathway to Healing and Wholeness. I am your host, Christian counselor Lisa Eddy and author of the book, The Seven Principles of Healing Trauma. We have a serious topic today, a very real topic that affects many across the U.S., from veterans to many who have experienced trauma. Today we're going to be looking at a biblical view and a mental health view and an in-depth look at PTSD. So if you or a friend or family member have suffered with PTSD, sit down, get a notebook, and let's take a look at this. But before we start, there are two truths I want you to remember if you or a family or friend have suffered with PTSD. And those two truths that we find in the Word of God are, you are not alone and there is hope. Can you say that with me? I am not alone and there is hope. Many times for those suffering with PTSD and all of the symptoms that it encompasses, we can lose our focus and lose hope that it'll always be this way. The enemy wants you to think that there is no healing available, that no one understands, that no one cares. And I want you to know that there is hope and you are not alone. There are many across the United States that suffer with you in the same way that you do. And there are counselors and pastors and teachers that do understand and are glad to help you. So the Biblical Counseling Center reports that over 31.3 million people in the United States suffer with PTSD. And we know that the working of trauma, many don't understand, but many have faced it, have faced trauma. Most have experienced it. You know, trauma wounding can be on a scale from one to 10. Some have experienced low level trauma that they recover from quite quickly. However, many have experienced chronic or complex trauma. Think about someone that is constantly being traumatized in a maybe a domestic situation or a rough childhood or a man or woman in war, that it is day after day of seeing traumatic events, even missionaries that are constantly dealing with seeing the effects of poverty and everything that comes with that, you know, seeing the worst things on earth that are happening and, and human suffering on a great level. Trauma comes from many places. It is defined as a deeply disturbing experience. And so when trauma happens, many of those, up to one third of those people can go on and have PTSD. Rocket Facts reports that one third of people with PTSD have tried to commit suicide. This is a very sombering statistic. It is a very serious thing. And so I want to encourage you that if anyone around you is suffering on that level and has lost hope and thinks that suicide is the answer, I want you to reach out to them. And if that person is you, I want you to reach out. You can call 988 and get to someone 24 hours a day. It is a crisis lifeline where you can talk to someone and talk through what is going on. So most people associate PTSD with veterans. But while it's common in soldiers returning from war... Anyone 
can experience PTSD that has went through a traumatic event. And these include, but are not limited to, physical abuse, sexual assault, surviving a natural disaster, or witnessing a traumatic event. All of these can lead to PTSD, where our body is stuck in that moment of trauma, stuck in that moment that we wish never happened. We get stuck in the one thing we want to forget. And that is how PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, is formed when we are stuck in that trauma. Even though our body is free, our mind can stay stuck in that trauma for years. But there is hope, and you are not alone. There are some common symptoms of PTSD. You may recognize these in yourself or in your friends or family member. Um, Anger and agitation, nightmares, depression, intrusive and negative thoughts, detachment, avoidance, increased uneasiness, decreased motivation, flashbacks, anxiety, hypervigilance, memory loss, insomnia, and substance abuse. We see these symptoms, one case after another. And PTSD is defined as a mental health condition. It's a real condition that develops following a traumatic event characterized by intrusive thoughts about the incident, recurring distress, anxiety, flashbacks, and avoidance of similar situations. So as we look at these 14 symptoms of PTSD, we kind of want to break them down and see how each one operates and what we can do about it. And before the show is over, I'm going to give you a real exercise that you can do at home when you are having a trigger, when the PTSD is flaring up, to bring you back in to the moment, the current moment, and stop the flashback, to stop the intrusive thoughts, to stop the nightmare when you wake up where you're not stuck in that moment of anxiety and hypervigilance. So I want you to stay tuned where you can learn this easy, effective tool in this grounding exercise that will bring your emotions out of that moment of the PTSD trigger, feeling like you're still in that traumatic moment back into the present. So Dr. Abhimo Chandak reports that 3 million people a year in the U.S. are diagnosed with PTSD. You are not alone. There are many suffering with PTSD. And we talked about how it is common in veterans. There has been a new um, change to the law for veterans There is help available 24 hours a day. Um, Section 20, the Veterans Comprehensive Prevention Access to Care and Treatment, the Compact Act of 2020, has just recently been revised. Now veterans can go and receive immediate emergency treatment for suicide crisis anytime at VA facilities and non-VA facilities to receive crisis help. They can also text 838-255 and talk to someone 24 hours a day. They can also call 988 and then hit 1. And that will lead them to someone any time of day or night. So I encourage you, if you need to reach out, to reach out and get the help. This is all being funded and by the National VA Association and Stop Soldier Suicide. Because Stop Soldier Suicide reports that 125,000 veterans have died 
by way of suicide since 2001. And so this is a problem that needs to be addressed and they are trying to address that. So I encourage you to go and get help, to reach out. Many times PTSD is treated with cognitive behavior therapy, um, CBT for short. And if you think of a triangle and you have your thoughts at the top and then your behavior and your feelings, everything we do in life, the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he, comes from our thoughts. So cognitive behavior therapy is about changing that thought process, not only taking away the intruding thoughts, but replacing it with something else, learning how to refocus your thoughts so you're not being tormented by the thoughts. And cognitive behavior therapy is very effective for this, learning to transfer your thoughts to something else. It's impossible to quit thinking. I can't tell you, just don't think. That doesn't work. Our brain is always thinking and going. But I can tell you that you can re- focus your thoughts. In Ephesians, in Philippians 4 and 8, it says, think on these things. And we have talked about that before. Anything that is lovely, anything that is pure, anything is holy. So you cannot stop thinking, but you can transfer what you are thinking about and begin to focus on something else. So as we look into these symptoms, anger, we talked about that. Anger is one of the most common PTSD symptoms. And this isn't normal anger that you had before the traumatic event. This is new anger. It is triggered when you are triggered by a memory of the trauma. This anger can happen when others seem to be having a good time. It is often over-explosive and can be very scary, not only for the person that is angry, but for those around. This is outside your normal character. This is your brain trying to make sense of being in a constant state of hypervigilance and fear. Um, an example, I worked with a young man who had come home from the military and it was his birthday and they were doing a surprise birthday party for him. And as he enters the room and everybody yells surprise, he's holding something. He ends up smashing the cake, a big anger, and no one could understand how this happy event has now, you know, turned into this angry explosive. But for him, not knowing what to expect was very upsetting due to the recent trauma and the formation of PTSD that he was now experiencing. And PTSD manifests, as we said, in many different ways. But anger is one of the most common. We talked about the nightmares being one of the symptoms. These are not normal nightmares. These are intrusive nightmares. They can be hard to wake up from. But not only are they hard to wake up from and seem very real, and they may be about the actual trauma, remembering the trauma, but it may be about something else but they're also hard for people to recover from. When they wake up, they still feel as if they are stuck in that dream. So it can greatly affect not only the night and cause insomnia, but it can greatly affect their daytime behavior because they are feeling re-traumatized at night. So then they become afraid to go to sleep. And we see people with PTSD really suffer with sleep disturbances and sleep problems. The intrusive negative thoughts. We talked about that. These are thoughts that come in and they just feel bad. They make us feel bad. They feel oppressive to us. And it can be anything from bad thoughts about yourself bad thoughts about your family and friends, people you trust. They, you know, they can be about being suspicious of the world around you, becoming fearful of the outside world and other people, becoming detached and agitated. These intrusive thoughts are just like arrows being shot 
to our brain and hitting us. Psalms 91 is a great prescription for not only the nightmares, but these thoughts. In Psalms 91, it says that he would protect us from the arrows by day and the terrors by night. That is a perfect example of someone who is suffering from PTSD. There are arrows of thoughts coming into their brain at day and terrors by night. But the Lord is instructing us in Psalm 91 that He can protect us, that we are not alone, and that there is hope. So if you or someone you know is suffering from PTSD, I encourage you to take that prescription of Psalm 91. Over and over and over, as every day when you wake up and you tell yourself, I am not alone and there is hope, Declare Psalm 91 over yourself, over your friend or family who is suffering, and it will greatly help. Detachment was one of the 14 symptoms we read about. What is detachment? Well, detachment is when we are unable to connect emotionally with others. This happens with PTSD because when we have went through trauma, we put walls up to defend ourselves. Self-protection modes. We put these walls up between us and the world, between us and others, even between us and our true self, our pre-trauma self. So we can have this detachment from reality, from the way we feel. When triggered by the past hurts that are unhealed, our our brain is flooded with cortisol and adrenaline. We see in PTSD increased uneasiness. What do I mean by increased uneasiness? I mean what we talked about, the hypervigilance, but also an easy startle response. People that have PTSD startle more easily than people who have not been through trauma. Think about fireworks. Many on the 4th of July, on New Year's, it is a great celebration for us. And we shoot our fireworks and we're having fun. But maybe somebody who has been through trauma and is now suffering with PTSD, that is not a fun occasion for them. Loud noises as a door shutting, a firework, a sudden scare, somebody jumping out, just play, being playful. Those are great triggers for PTSD. And they can, just like in the snap of a finger, take somebody from a normal state into a PTSD trigger and they feel as if though the trauma were reoccurring all over again. For those of us who are working with PTSD and are working with people who are experiencing PTSD, we have to learn a trauma-informed care approach. How to not startle them, how to not trigger them so they can get the healing they need. If your family member is suffering with PTSD, be aware that sudden loud noises, that surprises, that grabbing them without them knowing you're going to can cause them to be triggered back into the trauma while they're still healing. I've been very open about working with domestic violence survivors. And many of them, when we would approach, you know, just a hug, unwarranted, will trigger them because a touch to them means something different. So we want to be aware of how our actions and words affect those who have been suffering healing from trauma and with PTSD. When we talk about flashbacks, this is a common occurrence in people with PTSD. I've been working with a missionary who was involved in a natural disaster in the Philippines, and she has 
experiencing flashbacks working in the villages. She says even the smell of soil, because there was a lot of landslide, reminds her. Potting flowers, a happy event, something that is therapeutic to many of us, triggers her to right back in that moment. So when we're triggered by past hurts that are unhealed and our brain is flooded with a stress hormone, cortisol, and with adrenaline, these are the hormones that give us energy and strength. These are the hormones that God put in our body to run away from danger. Our heart increases. We breathe faster. We're able to run faster. But when we get stuck in that trauma, in PTSD forms, this is constantly happening. When your brain is flooded with these hormones, your response to the trigger is fight, flight, or freeze. Fight. We want to fight the danger. Flight. Run away from the danger. Or freeze. We are totally frozen in our emotions, unable to move or speak sometimes, unable to scream for help because we've been detached from the moment. Your mind and body in that trigger have been reminded of the trauma. Even though there's no real danger around you, you can be in the grocery store and hear a loud noise and there's no real danger in the grocery store but you feel as you're back in that moment. I told you I had an exercise that could help you, and I do. A grounding exercise that is very simple to bring you out of that trigger, out of that moment of fear and terror, back into the present where you are safe. So your blood, brain floods with these hormones, and a person is either going to fight, flight, or flee. And if you're having an interaction with somebody who is triggered in that moment as their brain is filled with cortisol and adrenaline, there is no reasoning in that moment. They're not thinking clearly. They don't have control in that moment. That's why we want to get them to breathe deeply, slow, deep breaths, counting them as they go in, really being aware as they go out to calm down, to calm the hormones down, to slow the heart rate. Traumatic events, by definition, overwhelm our ability to cope. Psychology Today talks about that about halfway through trauma, we usually detach. We disassociate. We stop feeling. It's like watching a movie with no sound about halfway through the trauma. So that's when it gets frozen in our body. And to heal it, Susan Pace, the trauma toolkit, she's the author of that, Healing PTSD from the Inside, says we cannot heal trauma until we fully move through the trauma, including the feelings of the event. Disconnection occurs when we disassociate ourselves from the event to protect ourselves and numb it. We talked about substance abuse being one of the symptoms of PTSD. It's for a brief escape to cope, to not think, but it makes things worse. If you are struggling with substance abuse, you can call 1-844-289-0879 to the National Drug Helpline and you can get help and answers. So if you or your family member is struggling with substance abuse, I want you to call that number. It's a free resource to help you. We talked about hypervigilance. Hypervigilance is being in a constant state of stress and looking for danger, feeling like there's danger all around all the time. When we live in that state, it causes inflammation in our body because we are constantly in a triggered state. We're looking for potential threats everywhere we go. This can make us sick and keep us sick. In Psalm 61, verses 2 and 3, David cries out to God from a desperate place. 
And the Passion Translation says, For no matter where I am, even when I am far from home, I will cry out to you for a father's help. When I am feeble and overwhelmed by life, guide me into your glory where I am safe and sheltered. Lord, you are a paradise of protection to me. You lift me high above the fray. None of my foes can touch me when I am held firmly in your wrapped presence. I love that scripture because you are not alone and there is help. I want to help you learn this grounding exercise. So if you are triggered or you know someone, you can help them remove themselves out of that trigger and back into the present moment. The first step is to tell yourself, I am safe now. And then you list, this is called the 54321 method. First, tell yourself, I am safe now out loud. And then list five things that you can see in your current environment, out loud. Four things that you can feel, that you can tangibly touch. Three things that you can hear. Two things that you can smell. And one thing you can taste. And then, I want you to recite your battle scripture. This is a scripture that brings comfort to you. It could be that Psalm 61, 2 and 3 that says, no matter where I am, even if I'm far from home, I will cry out for a father's help. So I want you to learn that 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 grounding exercise. So if you ever feel like you are stuck back, you are reminded of that trauma, you can quickly Get your emotions in your brain to realize that you are in a current, present, safe environment. I want you to reach out to those free resources and anyone can call 988 at any time. It is a crisis hotline and can reach out for help. So Father, I thank you for everyone watching today and I pray for those that are suffering, God that they would reach out to you for a father's help and you would heal their wounds. Every part of their soul would be made whole in Jesus' name. I thank you for joining us on Pathway to Healing and Wholeness. I am your host, Lisa Eady. Until next time. The advice on this program is not intended to replace that of psychiatric care. If you or someone you know needs help, call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. Dial 988 or one 800 273-8255. You can also go to suicidepreventionlifeline.org.